We are hope. We are honor. We are courage. We are justice. We are compassion. We are determination. We are harmony. We are Overwatch. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? And welcome to our panel. For the, with the women of Overwatch. Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um, my name is Nika Noor. I do our government relations efforts over at the Entertainment Software Association, the organizers and home to E3, North America's largest video game trade show. And thank you guys so much for being here today at Games for Change. Um, we're incredibly excited about this panel. We have with us Anjali Bamani, Voice actress for Sumatra. Sumatra. <laughs> Lucy Pohl, who's the voice actress for Mercy. Hi. Carolina Ravasa, voice actress for Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrea Toyas, the senior casting and voice director at Blizzard. <laughs> So why don't you guys introduce yourselves a little bit and tell us about how you guys ended up at Blizzard and your journey to Overwatch. I was like, I heard they gave me a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out there right now. We stood outside her house with lighters yeah, and boom boxes. <laughs> yes, yes. Pens. Uh, bribes, bribes, bribes. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm Lucy. Uh, I voice Mercy. And I, yeah, I basically, the way that I ended up at Blizzard was because of Andrea. I mean, I auditioned, but um, uh, but then it all comes down to the wonderful people at Blizzard who create the game and you know go through hundreds of hours of auditions and find uh, the person or the voice they think is is right for the character. So that's how I ended up there. My story is pretty much the same. I wish it was like a sexier story, you know what I mean? Like any of these stories, but it's, it was pretty much like a standard, you audition for the role and then you try to forget about it even if you really want to get it. And then with any luck, you get a phone call or something and then you jump up and down. Yeah. Um, specifically if you find out it's for Blizzard because you know it's going to be really, really good. Um, yeah, well, that's pretty much it. Hi, I'm Carolina, voice of Sombra. Um, same, my agency got an audition for someone who needed a Latin accent and speak some Mexican Spanish lines and I auditioned and forgot about it and two months later they said you booked this thing and I didn't remember what it was because it had a different name and so I was like great, um, didn't really know what it was and now we're here which is incredibly exciting so yeah. Andrea, when you're bringing these characters to life through casting, right. What are you looking for? What's your process like? Well, that's what's really fun to talk about, bringing strong characters to life, either male or female, in all honesty. You know, I think I've been in video games about 20 years now, uh, 17 years, and early on we would kind of go, okay, male, soldier, 40s, deep voice. And that was okay when our storytelling hadn't evolved, but our storytelling has evolved so much that now, um, especially at Blizzard, I work with my team, they'll kind of send me the, the basic beats, female, Latina, uh, Indian, German, da 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 and we start there and I go, okay, great. I almost don't care what kind of voice you're looking for. I want to know what kind of person you're looking for mm. because what's going to sell our character and make our characters pop in game is when we find the right heart behind the character. Because we could find lots of people with great voices, but so for us, we sit down and really talk about the character in a 360 degree and I always tell the team, we have to know our characters and understand them and what, what, what makes their heart beat and really get a 360 because otherwise it's just a voice. So we spend a lot of time talking about their backstory, where they're from, and I think we can all talk about when they each came in, we really sat down and talked about our characters. But you know, a really basic tool that I use for every casting that I do, uh, especially Overwatch, is I ask for every character, okay, these are the vocal specs, that's great, but what's your character's biggest dream and what's their biggest fear? Mm. And once you identify those anchors, you know, then you can really start creating that character and bringing them to life. I always tell people at Blizzard, we try hard. I'm casting people, not characters. And if you do the character route, then it's just not very real, but we're trying to find real 
the real parameters behind each, each character, if that makes sense. Well, and I think that that's the reason why these characters are so strong, right. because of their individuality right. and their mm -hmm. specificity. And I think that's really, for me, what male or female right. makes them so incredibly strong and real. Right. They're so, they have dimension. It's not only, she, you know, Mercy's not only a strong healer. Right. She has soft moments. She has vulnerability. She, you know, there's so much to all these characters. Right. And, um, and that's in the writing and, and the casting and, right. you know, all that comes together. So I think that's really, for me, the most beautiful thing about these characters. Yeah. Now, you three are clearly friends. I've seen I you guys talking about it. <laughs> no, not at all. I hate them both. <laughs> <laughs> how do you guys, can you explain just a little bit about the process of how you guys work together, play together, bring these characters to life? Does it help, inhibit, add? Well, we don't actually work together, huh? um, except we're actors, so playing and work are very uh, intertwined. Mm -hmm. but, um, but we just spend time together, you know. We, um, Last year, Andrea and the gang at Blizzard, the gang, the Blizzard gang, uh, mm -hmm. invited us all for a rap party after BlizzCon at the campus, and that's when a lot of us met each other. Lucy wasn't there, unfortunately, so we sought her out and stalked her until she would hang out with us after that. <laughs> but um, So that was really the first time a lot of us got to meet and got to be friends, and I think a lot of our friendships stemmed from the inclusivity of this game and, and the the people at Blizzard are, feel like such a family when you walk in, there's no way not to feel embraced by that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we don't really get a chance, haven't yet had a chance to work together, except the stuff that we do, you know, in our own do de do do we like goofy free time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we record individually okay. every time. I don't know if uh, you guys record anybody together ever, but um, every time I go into the booth, it's just me being directed by uh, Andrea. So we actually don't work with other actors. Mm -hmm. We just get along really well because it's a good team. Mm -hmm. That's like awesome. Anjali said. Let's check out one of these characters if we can cut to the clip of Sombra. <laughs> Who is Sombra? To the system, she's nobody. She doesn't exist. No one remembers the girl. There were a thousand children like her after the war but none of them could hack like she could. And she learned that people were just as easily manipulated. Now she understood how the world worked. Information is power. So she kept hacking politicians, corporations, governments. It was an addiction. But for the first time, Someone noticed her. When your hardware's obsolete, it's time to upgrade. The girl was gone, and Sombra was born. Now, I'm ready. I'll find out who really runs the world. I'll find their weaknesses and how to exploit them. And when I do, I'll be the one pulling the strings. Who is Sombra? You'll never know. Adios. <laughs> In Overwatch, your characters initially fall into an archetype. But over time, they branch out and they become, they're strong, they have, they're, there's charm, there's elements that the community really adds and influences and engages. How do you guys balance strength and relatability in how you're delivering your personas? I think a lot of that, again, comes from these multi-layered characters that, right. that the creators here have, have put together because there is no one defining characteristic of any one of these characters. Um, whether it's their ethnicity or their size or their shape or their gender or anything, it's only one thing that uh, the, one part of what defines them. So in terms of having to balance it, it's just like life. I mean, we're all these very complex individuals and there is no one thing. So um, rather than thinking of balancing the strength versus the vulnerability, it's 
line by line, moment by moment, being human, or, or the humanity of it, because not all of the characters are actually human, but they all have some form of humanity about them. Um, and so I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily, uh, personally, I don't think of it that way so much as circumstantially where the character is in the moment, what's going on at the moment, and how to portray whether it's strength or vulnerability at any moment, or sass, or whatever it is. Well, and I think that the notion, since you know we're all females, and the notion that women, to portray strength, um, you have to find a way to make it relatable. I think that's something that comes from society, and I think that we're so, through these characters, really encouraged to just embrace that and ignore all of that. And so it's kind of, you know, Andrea also conjures that out of us mm -hmm. and allows us to go there and can recognize um, what that is that uh, portrays that or, you know, what that sound is or that emotion is that we need to, to get that across. But I think for me, it's more about allowing myself to just be what um, I think we already innately are. For us, you know, when we approach it, it's really important, you know, I, I teach a lot of beginning voice acting classes and I say when I'm casting, I'm not looking for that voice, kind of what, like what I was saying earlier, I'm looking to hear a connection that each actress or actor has to the character and when we hear that there, there's something in the read that makes them connected to our character, we know that we are going to find a great kind of match and allow each actress to bring their life story into our characters. Mm -hmm. So much to what you're saying is that, you know, I'm not casting a character. We want, when I work with actors, when we work with actors, the more we can have you bring your life stories, especially as women, we've all had good days, bad days, been vulnerable, been tough, been all these things, and it's really important for us at Blizzard to work with each actress. And I don't want you to come in and play Symmetra, Sombra, or Mercy, but I want you to be you. Mm. And it's, it's more important that I want, it's, it's, maybe it's 50-50. I want 50% Mercy and 50% you. And I would actually even say I almost want more you than Mercy because mm. that's what's going to make Mercy shine. So what we try to do is bring as much, as much truth and honesty from your own personal story and in your own connection, what's it like to be, to be Indian American or to be you know, Latin American or, or German? What's it been like for you in your story thus far? Let's see if we can find ways to bring that into each line. Now, it's not always easy because the lines are, we must stop the you know, payload and, and things like <laughs> that. Moving so the that's, payload. that's really tough. Yeah. But it's really tough. But I think for each of us, when they first come in, we spend about at least an hour looking at artwork, talking. Because what, what yeah. we at Blizzard want to do to hopefully bring the strengths to your point is talk to each actress, lay the groundwork, show, okay, here's our map. This is all the terrain you have. Let's, let's map it out, go. Yeah. And then they choose to find maybe moments when they've been frustrated or strong or weak or scared. So it's, I, I guess the easy answer to your question is just the, the game company backing off and giving space for these humans to be humans mm. and, and finding their own strengths and vulnerabilities with each read, if, if that makes sense. Well, and also, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really grateful every time you voice direct us because sometimes we can't find the line and you do help us find the balance of, is this line me just being super badass or right. am I also a little afraid right. at this moment mm -hmm. in the game? And so um, that direction is really helpful. But I think for Sombra specifically, like she's really badass, but she has an awesome dark sense of humor. And I think that's like an, a, a great balance between right. when she's just kicking butt and then like, <laughs> cheers love, you know, I'm gonna make fun <laughs> of this character. Or, you know, and, and I, I really connect to that personally and, and maybe that's, you know, right. what I brought to the audition because yeah. I, just, I just got that sense of humor immediately. And that's Michael too, writing amazing characters too, you know, that, yep. that have that, I'm gonna be snarky right now and I don't care, or I'm gonna be sweet, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I think that it is, that they are three dimensional and that helps us instead of just, just being this one thing, you yeah. know. And we always say too, we do all the pre-work but not until the actor walks in the room does the magic happen because we, it's like we've birthed the baby and mm -hmm. give it to you, you know what I mean? Here it's your turn now. And so yeah. it's really letting Carolina's dark sense of humor come through and, and you know, all the talk we did about the boop and the whole, thing. <laughs> you know, there's like all these things, so yeah. yeah. What is it like, you know, developing and becoming these personas and having to portray that through a character that the community becomes? You guys are, you have this great, um, opportunity to be, to not only become these characters, but other people get to play you in some sense. Mm -hmm. And what is the feedback and the thought in like that level of responsibility? How is it different from, you know, 
voice acting for a cartoon, which is stagnant, or the movie industry, or just other things in general that are not as multi-layered as a video game? Well, I would challenge the idea that any of them are stagnant, and that the, because the relationship between people who are playing the game or people who are watching an animated series, now that we have social media, the feedback is immediate. There's no way you're not going to hear what the community thinks, their ideas of what's going to happen, their theories and all of that stuff. And I think the, the challenge for us is actually to not stay neutral, but stay as true to what we know without them. Um, and, and we don't know, uh, we as actors know very little about what is to come. Blizzard is very smart in keeping us in the dark, lest we you know, spill the beans on something. Um, but being able to stay as much of a clean palette based on what information we've been given in session alone, and then letting everybody out here put their own ideas and themselves into the characters and identify with things that they want to identify with. I mean, that's kind of the service and the job of the actor, period. If, if we were to completely define them ourselves, it leaves no room for the imagination of the people playing the game. And one of the beautiful things about this game, one of the many things, is that there, there are so many different things for people to identify with. It would do it a disservice if we were to push on that, if we were to force that, if we were to um, try to create that for them without it actually already being set in the lore or by the writing or by the, by the developers and whatnot. For me, um, when I, I met a fan who told me that because of Mercy, she wanted to become a nurse and help people because the character inspired her. And, um, and that really hit me because, you know, I'm fairly new to this world. And I remember Andrea saying to me in our first session, do you realize how big this is? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. <laughs> um, and so just meeting the fans and so many people writing letters that say that the character has gotten them through something difficult mm -hmm. or that, that the character has inspired them to be better or to be to strive for things they thought they couldn't strive for. Or, so that um, did hit me as a responsibility in, in a way, uh, as you said, to you know, um, make sure that in terms of the fans, uh, we communicate with them and we uh, make sure that they're part of, of the development of the character that we're experiencing. Because I feel like I'm still experiencing mm -hmm. the development of the character. Uh, so I do think that for me, I felt that there is a responsibility that comes with playing this character because there are people tuning in and mm -hmm. there are people listening and, you know, really taking it very, very seriously. And that's a beautiful thing because I think that anytime we can make a difference mm -hmm. in somebody's life Absolutely. and inspire them and give them something that makes their life better or more fun, that's so great. So I completely embrace that responsibility and, and um, but I want to include them as much as possible in the development. That's awesome. What challenges have you guys faced, especially when it comes to diversity, inclusivity, and engagement as your characters are developing, they keep putting out updates, releases, through social media and the community? And, and how's that feedback been for you guys? How have you been able to approach that? Feedback's been nothing but amazing. One of the, one of, at least in, in my experience, one of the most <laughs> wonderful things about this community is if there happens to be the tiniest like, pebble of negativity, it gets swallowed up by the positivity of the whole mm -hmm. um, in this community. There is so much love for these characters. There's so much love for the game, for the maps, for the world that's been created. Um, and I think that's a huge testament to what Andrea and, and, and Michael and, all, and Jeff and everybody there wanted to create with creating a world that was worth fighting for. And heroes that, that are, pro are not products of their circumstances, but who have taken their circumstances and the way that they have dealt with them is what defines them. So this whole community feels like they've leapt up and identified with at least one character and taken it and run with it. 
And so you, you know, so like, like Lucy was saying, we'll get these, these beautiful messages from people saying how they're inspired or they identify with this or that, or this is, a, this is a place where they've found a home or a community that they maybe didn't already have. And so as far as challenges coming from the community, I mean, I, it, it takes a lot to not cry half the time when I'm reading some of these things. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, I don't, I, I don't want to dismiss our, our, what we've contributed, but it's not, the, what the community has done with the game is way bigger than what, the, what we three voice actors are, have done or, or, or any of the other voice actors. We showed up as a part of this world, but it's what happened to the world when it was released out into the open. I think the biggest challenge is trying to keep up because <laughs> You know, I, I want to respond to all the fans. My Facebook inbox is, I, I, it's, it's crazy. I can't look at all the messages. And most of them just want me to boop them. But some of them, you know, when I open them, and, and there's this long message saying, you know, I just lost uh, my father, and I've been playing Sombra for hours, and I just want to say that blah, 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 blah. Thank you so much, you know. And I'm just like, what? How? I can't believe that it helps people get through really tough times or... We got some fan mail. She's Hispanic and she's on the spectrum, so she loves playing Sombra and Symmetra. Symmetra, I said that really weird. <laughs> um, and, and she just loves being able to look up to these two characters. And I was like, wow, I never thought a video game could reach such a diverse audience and have people be just so grateful. So I think it's just that I want to be able to respond and like every tweet, but there's too many, you know? And that's it. Um, it's it's a, such a positive game that I'm really glad that I, we can stand behind it proudly and just speak honestly that we are proud to be part of it. And, and you know, it's, again, it's the creators who've done it all. We lent our voices, but um, I, I do think it's just, it's a wonderful thing that's been put out into the world. Andre, you've touched on how sometimes you ask them to relate to a personal story, to right. draw out that character. Right. Right. One, how do you draw that out of them? And two, are you guys able to share maybe what you're tapping into or what those stories are? Well, I think, you know, first it starts with, like I was saying, the game team and myself. We have to find our own connection to the character because, when, especially as a director, each character has to be as real in my brain as it is to them. So, you know, I, I, we've had so many conversations. But, you know, I think myself and the game team start talking about what do we love about this character? What does he, he or she bring out in us? And with that, you know, I think the, the best part about our process is Blizzard is really great because they give us space to talk and work and collaborate and create. Um, uh, I started my career as a recording engineer working in lots of games with lots of directors, lots of companies. And a lot of times we just get in and get out. But we really sit down and talk. We, there's been tears in sessions. There's been all kinds of things. And I think we start by kind of making ourselves vulnerable so that they can be vulnerable, so that if there's a connection they have or a thought, um, that we make space for that to come through. We're not here to imprint our concept of our character on them and go, great, this is who Symmetra is. This is it. It's more to go, this is what she means to us. This is how we feel about her. You know, so with that, let's say the groundwork and tell me, what do you think about her? You know, I, th I remember talking to Anjali and about this beautiful, strong character and her strength and her power and just, just kind of roundtabling it and brainstorming. And, and, and I guess there's no really easy answer for your question other than saying we give space for them to find their own connection versus trying to imprint our connection on them. So. Uh, I can just say, working with Anjali, she makes you feel so safe that you don't feel like you can do anything wrong, which as actors, we're constantly like, am I doing it right? And am I gonna get fired? And I hope I don't get fired, and oh my God, and I just wanna please them. You know? <laughs> and she really takes that away, to the point that I remember in my callback, I mean, just if you close your eyes next time Andrea talks and just <laughs> take in her voice is like, oh my God, it's yeah. like the smoothest, I don't know what. It's Phone sex Amazing. Voice. Yes. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and I remember at the callback and uh, you were talking to me and saying, that's so wonderful. And I thought, is she mocking me? Because like, it's so amazing and she's making me feel so great and so safe that it's almost yes. like it can't be real. You know, like I couldn't believe it because I'd never experienced it. And then when, when I realized it is real because I got yeah, the, right. the part, um, I felt so safe. And yes. yeah. I think that's yeah. so important for actors because then, or for anybody, when right. you feel safe, you open up. Because we don't see Andrea. We just listen yeah. to her via headset. Exactly. So we're just kind of clinging on this. Because right. they're in New York and I'm in L.A. Yeah. yeah. To record remotely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try to sneak a peek at you every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I try to read your lips when right. you're talking right. off right. mic. Like, right. yeah. Um, so, yeah, and you open up and then... 
sometimes, you know, things happen that you can't even really explain in words, <clears throat> things that you kind of, you know, that come out. You can't, I mean, for me, I can't really put my finger on it, you know, but when you feel that yeah. safe space, yeah. things happen. Yeah. And they're in the moment. And then, that, but that's what you end up hearing, and I think that's what is so strong mm -hmm. for people and people connect to because it's real, because it really happened mm -hmm. in that moment, right. you know? Yeah. My job as a director is to keep my actors out of their own head. Oh, to, yeah. To, to keep them out of there because to what you just said, the more I keep you out of your head, things bubble up. My goal as a director exactly. is when actors say the, the line differently or, diff, or change it or, or add their own words, I want, I want the natural honesty of those reads. And if I can keep you safe from your own dark thoughts, then all these colors come up, and then what you're really getting is Lucy. You're really getting her life story. Like I, I mean, I keep focusing on this, but we want Lucy, you know, Anjali, and Carolina. That's what we want, and so we just give them the space to, so that you can just be you. And, and you're not, you're not, you're not playing Mercy. You're actually being you. Exactly, and that's so rare. I can't tell you guys how mm -hmm. rare it is in our profession. How lucky you we are when that happens. You know, on, even on camera you know, for voiceover work, for television, film, theater, when you get somebody that wants you and right. knows that you are the character, right. so mm -hmm. you can't do any wrong, but they have a vision of the grand scheme of it, so they can tell you, okay, that's great there, and that's great there, um, and you're safe, and you can play. Right. Uh, you know, I would say as a kind of theme for this talk, uh, if, I broke, if I brought this talk down really simply, we created strong characters, we found strong women, and we let them be mm -hmm. strong women in the booth. Mm -hmm. And that's the formula. There's no voodoo magic. I wish we had some special secret sauce we did, but we just <laughs> let strong women be strong women. Didn't hide from it. Didn't tell you to minimize yourself. Go be rad in the booth and kick ass. Let's just mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Be yourself and be amazing, and, and let's let that ring true and see where it takes us. And that's how, why we're here today. Mm. Well, what was the, the question, though, specifically? Because I was thinking about how, can you remind me like exactly how you phrased it, sort of? Oh, geez, you guys. Or bringing our personal. <laughs> okay. Well, because I couldn't, well, I was yeah, thinking about. stories yeah, that you relate yeah. to yeah. when Andrea is trying to get you into that character. Because I, I had decided that I wanted to play, you know, independently spirited alpha females with a cause. And then I booked this, and Andrea asks me, what do you, what do you think, oh, what, what do you feel about Sombra? And that's what I responded. And what I love about Sombra is that, uh, as a Hispanic in the business, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm constant. I love playing prostitutes, but I constantly audition <laughs> for, you know, f women who have to uh, be okay with nudity and simulated sex, and or, or immigrant who who came over illegally, or you know, drug dealer. Oh, talk about the drugs, you know. I love. I mean, somebody has her dark side, but I love that, you know, we can represent properly, and that's the feedback that we've gotten uh, is that everybody just loves how. Diverse it is, but they're all they're all wonderful characters in their own way, and I and that's what I love about this. I'm not mm -hmm. just playing this like illegal immigrant character, you know. Um, and and I that that makes me very happy, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's been weird. I've had some really sad moments because before we found our actresses and actors, we would do callbacks, and callbacks are when I find my top candidates and bring them back to to further play with them. And it was so sad to me. It was so sad. So many actors came in and gave me like this cliche stereotype yeah. voice or accent. And it, made, it just made me so sad that our world is like that. These people are coming in. Mm -hmm. And they're, oh, you want an Indian accent? Here you go. Right. You want a Latina accent? Here you go. And it's like, that's not, whoa, whoa. I feel so sad. Mm -hmm. That's what breaks my heart. And that's what I'm so proud of this game. Because we, early on, said we do not want any cliche, no stereotypes. Let's really stay away from all that. And let that... Even the degrees of accent, we don't want super strong. Let it just be what it feels right in the booth. Mm -hmm. because, but it was such a sad state of affairs, I really realized in the front lines what, act, what you know, ethnic actors go through. Because they go in here, oh, you want that thing? Here it is. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad that that's what they're used to. And I had to go, no, no, I don't want that. Let's just, it, was just, it was a really clear reflection of the industry and what we're up against and how we're trying to change it. Yeah. And, so. and then on the flip side of that, because of the safety that we are given in the booth, we are able to bring our authentic selves yeah who may or may not have an accent in that yeah, moment yeah. to our performance. And it's, it's a lot like being in a relationship. The more yeah, someone yeah. accepts you with everything that you are and doesn't even say this is good and this is bad, it's everything that you are is a part of what makes you uniquely you. And everything that each one of these characters have is a part of what makes them uniquely them. Yep. So every single line that we're giving, I don't, I don't necessarily consciously know what part of my experience I've pulled up to affect a certain 
emotional connection to something. And then sometimes it's just like, it's online. So it's not really particularly emotional. But I get, there's I get some so kind of emotional with the turrets. But I, well, they are my babies. They are my babies. <laughs> okay, just, so don't, just don't mess with my babies. But um, but there are connections to specific I don't know specific experiences mm -hmm. that I, I was I was taught very early on. Don't necessarily verbalize all of your acting, all of your acting secrets, the the, the things that you hang on to because sometimes you by verbalizing them you lose them. Um, whereas here, it, you know, we walk into that booth and Andre's like, you, you, as you, are correct. You are, you are the thing. So just go play with the thing. It doesn't matter what, what comes out of it. And like she said, too, um, as an actor, I think our job as actors of color or whatever we want to call it these days, I hate, I, I, I don't even like to call it, our job is not to aim for diversity and representation and Noah's Ark, one of everything, and not that, or two, um, but <laughs> to aim for inclusivity mm. and to aim for everybody belongs in this world with all of their complexity. And there happen to be these things that I could look at this character and say, okay, she's Indian, she does this, she does Indian classical dance, blah, 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 but no one of those things define her. She is the only thing that defines her. This is the only thing that defines, this is the only thing, and so, um, it's a really long way around saying this game has given us agency to help that process by focusing past the two-dimensional versions of things that we, that we might be used to having to do on, say, network television or, or other places. Now we have the freedom to build complexity. Mm -hmm. Games for Change has been about 10 years, 10 year anniversaries, 10 things to do. Breaking, going back to that kind of what you guys are touching on on stereotypes, and Andrea, with your expertise and your fantastic history in this field, what do we do in the next 10 years to break through those stereotypes and boxes to get to that thing? How do we get society to become that thing without checking these boxes and having to walk into these auditions as, and what's the hope? in moving forward. For the game perspective, you know, it really, it all, you know, we, I've been working on Overwatch for years and it feels like my child. And sometimes we're in the, you can't see the, the forest for the trees or whatever that saying mm -hmm. is. And it really, there's one moment where Overwatch really clicked with me and this is leading to answer your question and that was we won a Game of the Year award, I forget where it was at, but our game director, Ray Gresco, was on stage, pretty big deal. And he's like, yay, thanks for the award, thanks for the success, da 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 da, -da that's all cool. But what really means the world to us in these particularly dark times is, is everybody's cool, it's inclusivity, we love each other, there's no judgment, and it's our version of a better future. And I really love working at Blizzard because we've been brave enough to make our version of a better future. You know, there is Symmetra's, you know, mildly autistic, you know, Tracer is a lesbian, and there's all these different things, and the thing is, to A, have the courage to, we want our game to represent life. So we're not sitting there going, okay, hmm, let's, what colors can we add? Let's tick mm. these boxes. It's like, what does, okay, if we look out outside of our jobs and we're out in our daily lives, what does life look like? What are the colors? What are the people? What are the themes? What are the struggles? So all we're trying to do is mirror the reality that each of us in the game team live with and put it in the game in a very real way and not be scared to do that, but to treat it as normal. That's the thing we want to, all mm -hmm. these issues, transgender, autistic, whatever you have, it's just normal, it's called mm. life. Mm. And so I guess to answer your question from my perspective is to not have fear to touch these things because it is a part of all of our lives and then treat it as a normal. We're all just humans at the end of the day. So I think Ray Gresco, when he said, we're so happy that our version of a better future where inclusiv inclusivity you know, is normal is what, really, what, what's what I really knew Overwatch is about. So to answer your question, the future for the games industry is to not be scared and to reflect more of the world that surrounds us, not trying to do these kind of boxed in worlds, but to let characters be real and honest in the way that people are real and honest in our lives. Does that make sense? Is mm -hmm. that Thank you. <laughs> so that's what, in the next 10 years, that's what I hope to see. I hope to see, I would love if all games had such colors and flavors like we do. You know, it shouldn't just be Overwatch. Every game should have these, these things. So. For young women aspiring to enter this field, this line of work, becoming video game characters. What advice would you guys have? What would you tell them? How, how would we, how do we grow this workforce to kind of incorporate? Um, I, you mean to become voice actors? Become voice actors, sure. 
I always tell people that ask me that question to just go and do it and cast as wide of a net as possible. Try to find ways to do it at home. There's such good you know, apps and softwares that you can use to test things out and hear your voice and record, go to workshops with great people. You know, for me, I, I studied acting and that of course helped taking breathing workshops to develop your instrument is great, but just uh, go out and try to do whatever you can and the path will clear for you after a while, you know, and things will start sticking. Um, but I think that in the beginning, it's just about getting out there and trying everything you can to try to, um, yeah, gain experience and, and learn how to use your voice and learn what other people are doing and, and just um, see that goal and don't think too much about how to get there. Just, you know, go for it, whatever, whichever way is open to you at the moment, no matter where you live, you know? I think you have to find out if you like it, first of all. You know, I think we have ideas of what voice acting is, and first of all, discover if you like acting. You know, I think it. I think they go hand in hand. I, I just call myself an actor that happens to also do voice work, you know? Um, do a summer stock theater, you know? Like, do do theater uh, in, in your local school or wherever, and, and if you love it, then go, you know, pursue it. I just feel like if you don't love this career, you're gonna hate yourself because it really is hard mm. to get your first gig or, or get any gigs, you know? And we've been doing this for years and, and then Overwatch came along and we were lucky enough to book it, you know? Or, I mean, yes, we've, we've put in all the work for years, but um, it's, it's, a really, it's a really hard, grueling career and if you don't have the drive um, and persistence, it's, it's gonna burn you out. <laughs> And I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to sound negative, but it's just, we work our butts off, you know. Um, for years we've been, I mean, Lucy does a one-woman show, you know. Uh, it, it, that is so much hard work. Um, and it's it just, it's, it's all little pieces being put together after years and years of it. So, um, if you love it, do it. If you don't, go do something else. <laughs> yeah. I would say two, two main things that I recently have distilled it down to. One, Focus as much on what you are and what you have as this particular instrument and less on what you think the rest of the world wants you to be. Totally. Because every audition room I have walked into trying to figure out what they want has been eh. But when you walk into a room and you're like, this, I, I got you. I got you. For the next 10 minutes, however long we're here, worst case scenario, you'll be entertained. Best case scenario, your job is done for you because I brought you something that no one else has that might work for you. So and I think as a, as a younger actor, I was so worried about doing it right and not realizing that doing it right is just doing it uniquely. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that suits the character and sometimes it doesn't. And if you've been cast at it, you're, that's you. That's what they've got. Um, the other thing is that I do have a, a, a sort of life mission at the same time um, to encourage people to do that. Uh, to, to be as much of themselves and celebrate that as much as possible because the more we feel okay with ourselves, the more open we are to other people. And that's how I feel like one-on-one -on -one we can encourage inclusivity because exclusivity happens when people are scared of each other or think they're less than or anything like that. And so the more we can represent that in the world as actors, it becomes a life mission rather than a job. It becomes something that can sustain you and sustain other people and helps them to experience things that they can't. Um, it becomes exciting rather than grueling. And then when there is a rejection, quote unquote, it just means not right now. It doesn't mean no, it means not now, not this. There's something else, there's always something else because some, somewhere this fits. I don't know where, but somewhere it fits. You just have to find that space. Um, and so yeah, using, using everything that you have and learning everything. There is no, there is no form of education um, that, that you can have as an actor that will not serve you. There is no experience that will not serve you as a performer because you are bringing everything that you are to every character. Um, so learn anything you're passionate about, anything at all. Do what you love. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that, a yeah. much, that's a much shorter way to say it, so yes. <laughs> that would have been, been eloquent and concise. But whatever you think are your weaknesses are actually your strengths. 
you know, I think that. Or can be. Really what it is. And, and yeah, I mean, for me, that's the biggest thing I learned. You know, oh, I wasn't born in this country. And, you know, some people say, oh, you have no accent. Others, other people say, oh, I can totally hear the accent. And I try to, you know, not have an accent and worry about that. And, you know, all these things that uh, I thought were my weaknesses always. I've, and that's basically what my show is about. Mm -hmm. um, I've really, you know, I'm German. I'm Jewish. I'm what am I? Like, where do I fit in? Oh, I have to be this one thing. No, like I totally, you know, uh, a girl called me the other day, a young actress, she was like, I have really bad acne. I can never be an actor. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, right? Sorry, excuse me for <laughs> cursing, it's New York. <laughs> um, but I don't know, write a web series about a girl that, you know, goes through life dealing with that. Make it, it's your strength, you know? And people will relate to that and never ever think that some, that you should be any other way as you as Anjali says you know because those are the things that make you unique and that's what everybody's looking for yeah. people that are unique and that's what the game is and I want to add from the voice acting perspective I really am a big lobbyist I hate calling it voice acting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's acting yeah. and people under I mean I think voice voice acting is the most um, misunderstood medium I would argue that you guys can speak to this more than I can. It's the hardest medium because, you know, when you're on camera, you've got hair, wardrobe, makeup, mm. props, the whole thing. For video games, for those of you who don't know, you're in yourself, by, I mean, by yourself in a room, asked to bring these amazing characters to life, you know, and I work on World of Warcraft as well, and you're a dragon, you're a tree, you're a stone, you're a <laughs> flying bird. You're, I had to direct talking cutlery recently, so, you know, <laughs> all you have is yourself. See? So my point I'm is, for me, people, like, I get, my favorite story is I got a, a cassette, a cassette, from somebody doing the sounds, mim mimicking a vacuum. Thank you for that. I don't know how I need for a vacuum on <laughs> currently. But my point is they, un they, they think it's sounds and voices. Right. And it's yeah. acting. Yeah. And you know, yeah. actors are not acting, they're borrowing their own emotions from their own life. So for my, my little piece of, you guys were so eloquent, is for people who want to get into voice acting to study acting. Because yeah. I don't cast yes. voices. I'm at the point now, voices are almost irrelevant to me. Mm. I cast your acting skills because we can affect it in post. We can do all kinds of things. I'm casting people and actors. So for, from the voice acting perspective, it's not voice acting, it's just capital A acting. Mm. Oh, and, and fans sometimes come up and say, oh, I, you know, I, I only know these three, I, I can only impersonate three act, famous actors, and they give me their impersonations, and I say, that's great, but right. if you really want to do this, like, bring out yourself, or, or yeah. bring out other characters you create in yourself, your child voice, your little mushroom voice, whatever they are for cartoons, you know, but it does, it impersonate. A lot of us can't do impersonations, and it doesn't matter. It's more like, what, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah, and that's what mm -hmm. you know, Andrea's talking about. Is, is, it's more about that than about like, my Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Before and, we, sorry, oh, I just no, have please. to play devil's advocate for one second. Are you going to do Arnold that. Schwarzenegger Don't listen for to us? anything anybody <laughs> says and do it your way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. There's no yeah. right or wrong that's in right. this yeah. business, you know? So. Awesome. Yeah. Before we cut to Q&A, let's watch our final clip of Mercy and Symmetra. I'll be watching over you. Heroes never die. The true enemy of humanity is disorder. <laughs> Defensive matrix established. <laughs> Shield engaged. Teleporter online. I have opened the path. And, uh, you use my teleporter. With that. <laughs> I think we can open it up to Q&A. Healing forward. stream engaged. <laughs> there we go. How about in the front row with, I'm sorry, there we go. Your, your name, if you can state 
who you are and who you're with. And you both can tag team the question if you're, if you're <laughs> finding over it. All right, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Day, so I've been involved in gaming for a while. I actually play semi-professionally uh, Super Smash Brothers, and I also am a huge fan of Overwatch. I love playing Overwatch a lot. Awesome. Um, and I've also been really interested in voice acting, so this is actually pretty awesome to have you guys here. But my main question is, um, in terms of like women in gaming, um, which is great that there's a lot of push for women in gaming, and I love seeing the inclusiveness of all this diversity, but I still feel like there's a lack of black women in gaming, which is quite unfortunate. Um, and like I said, I've been involved in gaming often a lot, and I just don't really see black women in mm. as characters in games. And even in Overwatch, I still feel like there's kind of a lack of that. I'm just wondering, is there any why, I guess? <laughs> or I know your voice actors yeah. maybe you might not. There's no why, and I agree with you. I want to see, I want to see much more <laughs> of everybody. It's just quite unfortunate. <laughs> no, and I agree a thousand percent. I want to see a lot more of everybody. I think we're doing the best we can. I think we can always do better. But, you know, I, I think our goal is to, to do that. I mean, we, we just... And truth be told, we're, the party just started. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I like that. I like so that. So I'm telling you, I, I mean, I can't talk about what we've got planned. I would right, love right, to understand. if you guys promise not to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can't say anything. I know. The lips are sealed. <laughs> but my point is to you, I hear you. We hear yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. And we are trying to do all we can to be as inclusive as possible. But I agree. I, I, there's, there's so many more. There's, there's, there's so many more shades and colors and experiences and voices we want to get into the game, and we're working really hard on it. All so right. know, know, that we, know that we're hyper aware of that, and we're on it, and we're doing our All best. Right. Thank you so much. Yes, I really appreciate yes. it. Yes. Hi, Hi. My name's Malika. My question is for Andrea. Um, I can't hear you so well. Can you Hi. Oh. OK. I, is that better? That's better. OK. <laughs> my name is Malika. My question is for you. Hi. Yes. Um, how early on are you included in the, the writing process for these characters? Uh, well, I'm not part of the writing process. Michael Chu, our writer, uh, and his team handle that. But I'm involved early on because the minute they start thinking about these characters, I need to start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And we need to evolve together because as their thoughts proceed, I need to get that character. I mean, I really feel like all these characters are in my DNA. Mm -hmm. They're part of me. That's why, you know, I'm wanting to come here. I'm a woman of Overwatch. You're a woman of Overwatch. So for myself, the minute the conversations start, I forcefully <laughs> insert myself into the process because I really need to know. We all need to, this is weird to say, we all are like jointly giving birth. <laughs> so in our own <laughs> weird, I don't even know, that just came out. Um, but my point is I need to be part of the early days because I need to tell them what to think about because sometimes they get so fixed on maybe the programming and the, the damage our characters can deal. And you know, they, it's easy to get stuck on those things, but I go, okay, cool, cool, cool. But who is she? What's her heart? You know. So for me, we jointly work together. Their work on the programming and abilities, you know, affects how I think about the voice and what we're going to do. And we kind of we're very symbiotic about it. So I, to answer your question, I'm there pretty much from the get-go, so we can kind of jointly give birth again. There you go. Okay. So awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you get it, guys, right? Right. <laughs> Weird. Yes. Thank you. Um, just continuing down the front row, I think the young woman in the white blouse had a question, and then we'll work our way around the room. Figured it was more convenient for the microphone handoff, but. Hi, thank you, Nika. Uh, Katie Freitas with The Daily Walkthrough. Um, I was wondering, tell me a little about your guys' relationships with Jeff, and he's so involved with the community, and he's, he's always talking to everyone, and, and it's one of the few games I've seen where you have people like the actresses and actors and Jeff and all these people so intimately involved every day talking with the community. And I want to know a little bit behind the scenes what it's like for you guys with him. Jeff who? They don't oh. see him that much. <laughs> oh, we yeah. see him. Yeah, we don't really. You know, because I he's always at yeah. Blizzard. So I think yeah. they've had, you guys could speak. But he, just so you know, he's busy running the world mm -hmm. right now. Yes. Yeah. So he has, it's my, I'm the primary interface with him. And also Michael Chu, our writer. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think he's been, he was, a, he was at some early sessions. I'll let you speak if you've interacted with him, but for myself, to me, Overwatch is a reflection of him. He's leading the team, he's leading the message, he's got the biggest heart, and not because I work there. So really, the game team who makes the game is, their DNA is in the game as well, and he's, if anybody's watched his videos, the most lovely human on the planet, which is why Overwatch is so lovely. So yeah. from my perspective, he's the beating heart of Overwatch, and I don't know if any of you have spoken to him before. Very we met him briefly at the rap party, but yeah. we don't have a lot of interaction with yeah. him. Authenticity of the game was really reflected by the choice of having Jeff take a forefront on it. Um, I don't know. You know, he's he weighs in, and I think he's part of the collaborative process. But really, it's not 
it sounds like bullshit because I work there, but it's not. It really is, it's the most, I've worked on lots of games, lots of companies, it's a very democratic process. So what's wonderful about our team, sounds like such bullshit. <laughs> every, every, we've got, Blizzard has a big org statue, we've got our tenants of the game uh, of our company, and one of the tenants is every voice matters. So when I go to Overwatch meeting, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not hierarchical. We can all raise our hands. I've been to their huge meetings and everybody's got an opinion and we're all listening. So I think the diversity of our game is reflected by the diversity of our team. Whether it's Jeff, but Jeff listens to everybody and he also responds to your email within five seconds, which is amazing. Mm. So, so really, it's a diverse team making a diverse game. And one more question before I get up. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to get down your death your death lines when you're going and you're oh, screaming God. and you're going. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's so fun! I love that. Really? Oh. Yeah, I love that. Oh. I don't. Death that was one of them right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was death by chair. Yeah, exactly. Um, I loved. He was like, "Okay, this is death by being crushed." And yeah. I was like, like what? And now you're what? falling what? off a cliff, but you hit something on the way down. So like, make that. And you're burning, but then you you're freeze. Frozen. Yeah, exactly. You're frozen. frozen. Yeah, I will say. I will say that, thank God, Andrea and, and the folks in the, at the recording session are completely understanding of how difficult, just technically difficult, it is to go through and do all of those because you can be in sessions, in other sessions, where they just have you screaming yeah. for hours, or not hours, yeah. but until yeah. you blow your cords yeah. out. Um, whereas they're very, very specific. Yeah. If you get, if you have the take you like, we move on. It's yeah. not like, yeah. oh, let's just do seven more for safety, you know? The exertions are brutal. <laughs> I think the voice, act, the voice acting, Video games and interactive, the interactive community, we were, it's a really hard thing. To be a voice actor, you've got to know how to die a million different ways. Yes. I've got yeah. an actress that one time told me, I've died so many ways, I've got to work on my own death sound. I got to be like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh -huh. Because they really have been electrocuted, decapitated, la, 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 la. So yeah. the actress, that's the hardest part, I think, about being a video game yeah. voice actor. Yeah, and also but it's so fun. Yeah. You get to die a million a ways, million but you're ways. still alive. Yeah, yeah. And but I, think, I feel think so awkward doing it. It's, it's um, so It gets sexy pretty, you gotta be careful. It gets really <laughs> sexy really fast. Like, like, like there's a compilation video of all the death sounds that you yeah. did. I think all of us all have of us compilation have one, videos on like, YouTube of all of our voice lines. This sounds awkward. Yeah. But, um, a little less intimate. Maybe a bit more bloody, I don't know. Yeah. Right, right, right. But um, also, obviously, being physical in the booth yeah. as much as you can yeah. without causing any excess noise yeah. on the mic is a huge thing. And that's not just for the exertion uh, uh, lines, but it's for everything. You know, finding the physicality to the point that you can um, in the booth is a, really, is a really big thing in such an active game. Yeah. Um, I'm not like flinging myself up against a wall to do those death sounds, but you're imagining you're taking, not. You're, well, you know, I'm, apparently I'm not as committed as you are, so um, I haven't done that yet. But like imagining taking a punch or, or, or those things, it's, um, <laughs> and usually we, it's a whole little, we it's a do little bit that, of crazy. But we do that, like we do the last 20 minutes of a session, yeah. that's when we'll do death sounds, and we might do more death sounds the next session, the last bit, so that, you know, we go through a bunch of lines, and then at the end is where we, you know, but they're also Which so good at good. giving you examples. Right, right. Yeah, what they think. Because yeah, yeah. sometimes you're like, oh, how does that what? sound? <laughs> yeah. And they know what that's supposed to sound like. Yeah. 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 I do remember feeling like I was losing my mind a little bit when I left this, that, 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 first session, that first session. And I, no, but losing my mind and being like, okay, so those are all those ways to die. What if I died by asphyxiation? What would that sound like? Like I was imagining all the different ways to die and I was like, this is dark. Um, but, you, but it is, it's, you, I mean, I'm, I don't intend to actually experience that. So figuring out what that feels like is, it's tricky. All right, thanks very much. Hey. Thank uh, you. All right, we've got questions. We've got one back there behind you. Thank you, gray shirt. Don't forget to state uh, your name and who you're with, please. Hi there, so my name is Jen. I'm an educator through multiple modes, so it's more of a comment and a thank you. First thing is the diversity. Um, with many of my students, you know how it is in the world today, and oftentimes you don't really see yourself in video games as strong female characters. As an avid gamer myself as a child, it's really amazing how to see that development. And the second thing is that I have um, when my students believe me, and I don't think they'll believe me that I'm actually addressing you, um, <laughs> which will be, yeah, that'll be another conversation, but I just want to thank you because it's led to a lot of conversations and a lot of relationship building between my students and I, like, oh, I play Mercy. Oh, do you know what Mercy is? Yeah. I play Symmetra, I play Sombra, I play all these characters. Oh, but I do too. And it becomes like a gap, like, that gap is closed for the students that don't really communicate much yeah. with teachers. And like we can share that love 
together. So I just wanted to thank you really for that and me for me being able to connect with students on that level for something that we all love and enjoy. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we got a couple more in the, how about that young gentleman in the back? While I can see you, yeah, I'm looking at you. Yeah, you do, high five. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. <clears throat> Uh, hi, my name is Nick. I'm a game designer studying at NYU. And uh, first, I just wanted to say thank you guys for coming out here and doing this. I, I think I speak for all of us when I say we really appreciate it. Um, and my question is, as someone who's uh, interested in game design as well as creative writing and kind of like integrating that into game design, for example, like, can you hear me? You get better. Can you get better? <laughs> oh, sorry. We're like, yeah, we're losing you. I'm so losing nervous you. to get close to Just get really close. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but anyway, my question was just like being involved in this kind of this creative process that you're involved in, where like um, people have contributed to this game before you and they've kind of decided like, yeah, we're, we're interested in having a character that might be like this. How do you think you're able to like really get involved in that creative process in the sense that like you can sort of like talk back to people and say, yeah, you know, I really like this aspect of the character. I think this should be emphasized. Can we? you know, make some room in the story bible for like this or that. Um, and kind of what steps do you think people like working in a greater organization can take to foster that kind of feedback and talk back where just everyone at every part of the process can contribute in some way? Andrea? I'll just Andrea? <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. So what's the best way to collaborate and give feedback to, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand or, um, the question. Well, just to sort of anecdotally uh, make sense of that big mess I just spewed out of my mouth. Um, for example, I remember hearing a story about how one of the voice actors for Fallout 4 actually had no idea they were doing a Fallout game until after the fact. And they were just very, really? I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Uh, That's okay, very... you just doubted me, so I'll just say yes. Okay. <laughs> I've... Yeah, so like those kind of horror stories can make me think that there must be. But I'm just, I, I, let me just jump in real quick so you understand. Absolutely. Because it's not so much a horror story as that was a certain set of circumstances based on where they were in the production process on that, on that game. Um, the way Andrea has been talking about how Blizzard works with every voice mattering extends well into our sessions as we talked about. So in terms of actors becoming involved in the creative process, we are given in the sessions the freedom to, to have that collaboration with them. We are also aware that there is a big picture we know nothing about. So that our input is being heard, whether or not it is taken is not up to us. We know that we are absolutely being heard. Um, and that is, I think you foster that by having an organization, having a team that lives by, the, like actually walks the walk and talks the talk. Um, and, and that's kind of what you know, Andrea was saying earlier, is that Jeff will listen to everything. There's a big picture that other people may not know about, so he'll, he, uh, people will take all of the input and then put it into that big picture. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answers your question a little bit more. I think it does, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, thank you. That, that did help, yes. <laughs> All right. It looks like we have some questions in the front row if we want to do one and two. And I think we have time for those two questions. Making it easy on you, dude. Best microphone carrier right. I've ever seen. Ooh, well, that's loud. All right, so I got into Overwatch a th three weeks ago with this kid's account because my parents was like, oh, it's too expensive, don't buy it. But um, my first, I made with Mercy, Sombra, and Symmetra, so that's actually great for me. Awesome. So initially, when I was younger, sixth, uh, fourth grade through seventh grade, I, all I wanted to do was be an actor. So I was in all the musicals, all the plays, and my parents were just like, no, it's not, it's not gonna work out for you, you know? So my first thing was, oh my god, there's an Indian who's um, in an acting role, I was like, oh, represent, you know, it's great. <laughs> but um, my second thing is, I have a friend who's like, like one of the stories you told about wanting to be a nurse. I have a friend who's like actually really affected by Overwatch. He's like, oh, I have something to do with my free time now. And I don't know many, that many girls who play Overwatch, but I just wanted to thank you because I'm not really a first person shooter type game. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, wow, all the characters have these great stories. And I watched those like- um, Shorts. Short yeah, the films. shorts, yeah, the shorts about 
how like all these characters originated. I'm just like, wow, this is great. It has such a great backstory. And I want to thank you all. Like you guys put in so much more effort than you think. And I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. And voice actors or actors, I'm sorry, don't get the appreciation. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe they don't want the fame, but they should get it. You know, it's just a really great profession, and thank you. I admire thank it. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, hi. My name is Helena. Um, I'm in my last year at this school. And I'd really like to ask all of you for the next frontier of women who are looking to change the media industry as we know it, what advice would you give to someone who is not afraid of the challenge to do that, but needs to know what needs to be done? I, no, this is, it's I'm such a, like, it's such a huge can, question. Yeah, can you say that one question? Yeah. So for the next generation of women coming through, what do you got to do to keep pushing forward? Is that kind of it? Yeah, I think well, that. Advice, but you were specifically speaking about in media. Yeah, game media, mm -hmm. but really all media. I think that we're all aware that there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed um, the way that the media industry is run. And I'm just wondering, for the next generation of people who are going to evolve that, what what do you guys, how do you guys think that can be approached in the most effective way? I, 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 I'm sorry, go ahead. I think, um, you know, look, I work in the video game industry. It's a lot of guys, right? Um, and I think it's been, inter it's, it's been a great journey for me because I think the way I've gotten to where I've gotten is just, I mean, it sounds like such cliche bullshit, but just kind of believing in myself and being strong. And I think as women, myself included, probably every other day, sometimes I feel timid or I, maybe I shouldn't have this voice. If I'm in a big Blizzard meeting at Overwatch, maybe I shouldn't say something. Fuck it, I do. Mm. And I think it's to really get a strong sense of self and not be afraid to have a voice. The more women mm -hmm. that, that have voices in a room, yeah. the more it's gonna be okay for us to have voices in the room. So in a weird way, once you kind of start pushing past your fears and being you, and yeah. I feel like so many women I meet, well, a lot of them are really amazing, but we need to own our space. And guys, totally. I love you, I'm not saying, I think we as humans need to own our space. I'm not, let's not make it a gender thing. Just you walk in that room, you fucking know your shit, and you kick ass and you say what you think. And I Boom. think as women in so many ways, from previous generations, we're kind of taught to kind of be polite, sit in the corner and do our thing. Fuck it, I've got a thought and I'm gonna raise my hand and you're gonna hear it. Mm. Yeah. So I think don't be afraid to be ballsy. Having said that though, as women, I feel like I work with some women, I not work, I know women, who wanna be ballsy in a masculine way and kind of mimic male Absolutely. energy. And I've really found that the best way to be a strong woman is to be a strong woman. I and so to agree. really channel your inherent strengths and not try to be a dude and not try mm -hmm. to be this, just be a strong person. Yeah. And I think it, but it's really having to sometimes put yourself in uncomfortable spots, push forward, maybe be nervous and ask a question and talk, but the more you get used to being heard and push and putting yourself out there, the more it's gonna come natural. So I would ask the, the next generation of women, the generations of women, to kind of own their space, take up more space, be present, and just go fucking, just go right out there and do it. And, and from a, totally, a 100%, from a, a content creator perspective, also like tell your stories because mm -hmm. That people want to hear those stories, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, don't let anybody tell you that they're not interesting or engaging or important. You know, I think that um, even men too. You know, yeah, there's yeah. such a small percentage of those people that tell you you shouldn't do this and you should. And most people aren't actually like that. And most people want, you know, diverse voices, female, male, you know, transgender. So. The audience is out there. Go out and do it. And I totally mm -hmm. agree with everything Andrea said. Be a woman. Embrace that. Yeah. You know, don't go hide it. it. Well, I think I think we've heard enough of this from like the Duplass brothers and like anybody who's making their own work. Lucy did her one woman show, which is brilliant, and it's about her problem then becoming not a problem but her strength. Mm -hmm. I do a, a web series that I I produce and shoot and edit myself and I play all the characters because I got tired of wanting to be cast in something that I felt right for and finally was like, well, I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like you could write a video game about a black, well, black woman, you yeah. know, or a short film. Like yep. really, like this sounds so silly, but with an iPhone you can do totally. anything. Yeah. And if we're telling these stories about a transgender, you know, albino Awesome, you know, because these are the stories that need to be told, and 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 we want it. We want to tell them. So as as cliche as it as it is, write your own work and produce mm -hmm. it and get it done however you can, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And don't listen to like like Lucy said. The print there 
they, there are less voices telling you that you can't or shouldn't or there, there are these obstacles in your way and they are insurmountable than we think. They just tend to be louder yeah. and we tend to, for whatever reason as human beings, listen to them first. And our job is to be, our job in general in life as, as humanity is not to be focusing on, oh God, here's the problem and I have to fight it. It's, it's everything, there is a solution, we just have to find it. You know, it's, it's, it sounds like semantics, but it really does change your way of thinking. I could have looked at my life as, oh, I'm an Indian actress, I'm short, and meow, 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 I could have done that. Or I, can, or I can say, these are the things I want the world to look like, how do I help make that happen? From very small actions on a daily basis to bigger picture. Um, and, and then I'll stop about this, but this is something that's been hitting me a lot. A friend of mine does a lot of work in the Middle East. And someone asked him, what, what, is, what is the best thing I can do to help solve the problems in the Middle East? Which is like, what is the, you know, how big a question can you ask? And my friend said, the next time you see a woman, an old lady trying to cross the street or fall down, go help her. Simple as that. Start taking smaller actions towards making the world look like you want it to look. And those obstacles just become, it becomes a video game. It becomes skirting around it or blasting through it or those things. It becomes, it's the gamification of life. And also allow yourself to be vulnerable though, you know, and to be weak and to say, okay, today sucked and I didn't get what I wanted and it was a challenge to be a woman in a room full of men. That's okay. That's real. That's true. It is a challenge, you know, um, as a, probably a man is challenged in a room full of women. You know what I mean? So. Like, don't try to suppress that and think, I have to be this way. As Andrea said, I think that's so important. Don't try to be masculine because you think that's the way you need to be to be successful. Be a woman. We're emotional. We're irrational. That's beautiful. Celebrate it. Use be it. that. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Let your freak flag fly. <laughs> Round of applause for our panelists. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.